So in three, two. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contract Committee for Monday, November 6, 2023. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding motions, and as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum may be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Emery. Good evening. Mr. Young? Present. Ms. Han? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Ms. Harvey? Present, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. May you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. Mr. Pedro Agosto? Present. Dr. Melissa DiDonato? Present. Dr. Jess Grimm? Present. Mr. Hartlove? Here. Mr. Hermer McCall? Present. Ms. Margaret Ann Howie? Here. Mr. James Corns? Mr. Pete Dixit. Present. Ms. Bashira James. Ms. Allison Myers. Present. Ms. Megan Shea. Present. Ms. Shannon Dawkins. Present. Thank you. Mr. Brad Kahujan. Present. Mr. Merrill Plate. Ms. Melanie Webster. Present. Ms. Mary Shanahan. Present. Ms. Carolyn Kiefer. Present. If there are any additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your names now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Mr. Hardlove, please state your name for the record and proceed with our first contract. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Hardlove. I'm the Chief Financial Officer, and I'm going to begin with uh, contract LLY-425-22 non-public special education facilities. Um, uh, this contract modification will provide for additional non-public facility facilities approved by the uh, by MSDE, Maryland State Department of Education, that are available to provide special education services for BCPS students with disabilities. Those uh, those additional schools are listed uh, in the contract vet, contract award vendor information. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Are there any questions from committee members? Yes, Mr. Young, I have a few questions on this contract. Proceed, Ms. Han. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, my first question is, and I think Mr. Hartlove, you already answered this, but these are additional providers being added in addition to our current providers? Uh, yes, yes, they are. Thank you. And I, I do see that both of these providers are out of state. Are services going to be delivered out of state as well? Yes, yes, they are. OK, and I notice in the exhibit we received that Comar does require um, services to be provided when they can't be provided in state. 
but I'm curious as to um, how this would affect the residency if these are long term permanent placements in out of state um, locations or facilities. What I we have county's obligation continues um, to be. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I cut you off there at the end. Um, I will attempt and then we have some other staff here that can jump in as well. I believe there's still Maryland State uh, residents. They're still in county residents. They're just uh, the services can't be provided um, here in county. So we've, we, we, you know, we try not to send them out. If there's a, if there's a closer uh, placement, we try. But if this is the best placement for the student, uh, that's that's where they're sent. But they're still officially uh, Baltimore County uh, Public Schools students. So did I get that right? You did. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so this does require it. It does not affect the residency um, or the in county considerations with providing these students. These services is what I understand you're saying. That, that is correct. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions on this contract, Mr. Young. Thank you, Ms. Hand. Are there any other committee questions? All right, if not, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, could you um, pre present contract number two, please? Sure. Uh, KSH-313-19 Cosmetology so, uh, supplies. This is an increase in the maximum contract spending authority. Uh, uh, with with your approval, uh, the uh, contract would increase uh, the spending authority by seventy five thousand dollars, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to three hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Are there any? And we have staff. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I keep over. I, I'm sorry. I keep uh, jumping over people here. Are you done, Mr. Harlove? <laughs> I am. I am done. OK, are there any questions from committee members? All right, hearing none, Mr. Harlove, if you could please uh, proceed with presenting our next contract. Sure. Um, NGO-403-24 School Activity Fund Accounting System. Um, this is a uh, a piggyback of a Montgomery County contract um, stays with the same uh, system that we currently use. Uh, it provides this is a uh, system for uh, uh, that provides comprehensive web based school activity fund accounting software, and that's used at at all of our schools. And the co total cost of the contract is one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Are there any questions from committee members? Yes, Mr. Young, I have two. Please proceed, Ms. Hinn. Thank you. My first question is, will this system integrate with our new ERP system? Um, I am not sure. I believe it will, um, but um, we'll probably have to. Um, it, it's currently um, interfacing with our existing system, so um, I believe we'd have to work through that interface, but it we will, I mean, that would be our goal would be to have it um, interface. And the system that we're use, using is a system that's used throughout the state. So it's a pretty uh, uh, widely used uh, system. So, um, uh, but I don't think we've gotten to that point where we've looked at the interfaces on this system versus uh, our ERP system. But I see Mr. Augusto is, is here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I would say they're right now with our scope for the ERP implementation, we do not have um, any integrations or interfaces that we currently have today that are planned to be sunset or functionality, I should say, that we currently have that is that is not going to be included in the ERP implementation. Okay, and, and currently we do have an integration between um, the system that schools are using to track the activity funds and our current systems and processes. Am I understanding that correctly, Mr. Augusto? Well, I'll defer that to um, 
Mr. Hartloff, if you mentioned that there currently is, or if Mr. Corns knows for sure, but um, any functionality that we have today uh, will not be lost. We may replace it with um, an in-house, or um, something that's within the Oracle platform, but we're not, we're not doing without functionality. So yes, Ms. Head, to answer your question, I, my understanding, I, I, I'm not into that level of the details, but my understanding is, is that we use the same chart of accounts. So, um, and th this uh, software that we currently use for school uh, activity uh, uh, counting uh, will uh, use the same chart of accounts as we're going to be using with, uh, with the new ERP system. So it should be, it should be uh, seamless. OK, great. Thank you. And my second and final question has to do with the roles of our staff personnel um, and any volunteers that might have access to the system as a lot of our PTAs um, provide this reporting up to staff. Um, will that? I guess my question is who will have access at the school level? What roles and what training will they receive? And will that include our volunteers? So if you're talking this system, we're not changing. This is the same system we currently have and the main access are going to be your administrators and your financial secretaries. They're providing reports and uh, information to to uh, the various stakeholders out there um, on what's in their accounts, but the actual interface with the accounts is uh, um, is going to be the admitted your principal, your um, your assistant principals and your your financial secretaries and then central office staff um, as well. Those would be the people that would have access to the system, the only people that would have access to the system. And I think some, I believe some, um, if you are a teacher and you're running a particular um, um, field trip or something like that, you may also have access for that field trip, I believe, but I'm not, uh, that I'm not sure of the, of, of, of how far we let that access go on those types of things. OK, thank you. And and from the contract description, I was unclear. I thought this was a new um, software package, so this is continuance of our existing. Correct, correct. This is a, yes, this is continuing. Yeah. And my understanding, Ms. Uh, um, Webster can can jump in um, that we our contract expired. We are piggybacking with Montgomery uh, for this year and with the hopes of of either piggybacking in the future or bidding, or bidding it out again. Did I get that right, Ms. Ms. Webster? Yes, you did. Thank you. Um, it might be help with clarity. I know in other contract recommendations for the description language to specify it's for continued use of the current system. That way I don't have to um, ask it. questions in committee. That's always real helpful to know. But thank Got you. For clarification. That's all I had, Mr. Young. Thank you, Ms. N. Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with presenting our next contract, contract number four. Sure. JBO-710-23 Health benefit Benefits Plans for Baltimore County, Maryland. Um, this is an increase in maximum spending authority. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by, um, this is a five year figure, um, 1 billion 98 million 13,582 dollars. Uh, this contract will provide for continued health benefits for Board of Education employees. Um, and this is a, uh, uh, we're procuring, uh, this procurement is under a Baltimore County government contract P-312. And I see uh, uh, Mr. McCall is here, um, as well as um, Ms. James, who uh, Ms. Bashir James is here to uh, answer any questions if you have them. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Are there any questions on this contract? I have one, Mr. Young. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Um, if staff are available to provide the rationale or justification for this increase, um, simply based on the amount, and I appreciate Mr. Hartlove pointing out that it's for five years, but if the, the what is the root cause of this? Is this simply for continuance? Are we looking at rate increases? If staff could just provide the committee with some more background information, that would be helpful. 
this is Bashir James. So, so it's actually for both. Um, we have five plans and we've worked with our vendor to anticipate what the increased cost will be for the five years. And um, that is where we um, got the cost um, that's presented today. Do you happen to know roughly um, what that amounts to in percentage in terms of increase over the five years? I believe it's, I'm, I'm going to defer to our accountant who's also on the line, Ms. Kiefer. Hi, um, our consultant had given us a 5% increase over the each year in premiums. OK, so on, on the baseline assumption that staffing levels remain relatively flat or with modest increases, I assume is the assumption these numbers are based on. Yes, current current enrollment information. OK. Thank you both very much. Are there any more questions? All right, Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with our next contract, please. Yes, uh, contract 5JHO-701-24 E-Rate Consulting Services. Um, this is a, a new contract that will provide E-Rate Consulting Services for the Office of Network Support uh, service, Services. The uh, maximum contract spending authority is $79,500. Are there any committee member questions? Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with our next contract, please. Sure. Uh, the next contract is CWA-113-22 Alternative Student uh, Customer Transportation. This is an extension, a one year extension con uh, of a contract that it would take us through December 31st, 2024. Uh, the extension will provide for the continued service of alternative uh, student slash uh, customer transportation for the Office of Transportation. This contract provides for the use of alternative vehicles for transportation of students identified with special needs and students experiencing homelessness. And the um, the 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 dollars are not changing. It's just a one year extension. Are there any questions? I have one, Mr. Young. Please proceed, Ms. Hen. Thank you for Mr. Kahujan, if he's available. Yes, he, he is. He's here. <laughs> yes. Good evening, sir. Hello. Hi. Um, does this continuance of this contract um, include or adequately fund increased transportation for these students? We we see a need. I don't have to tell you there's there's certainly demand for that. Are we looking to expand um, the services we provide to this group or is this based on current transportation levels or enrollment? This is based on current, so this contract is federally sourced, so each time that this contract comes up for extension, that's when we have to extend as well. OK, thank you. Are we continuing to pursue other um, op non I, I'm going to say non traditional transportation options for these students? I I know it's. Taxing on on our limited resources that we have um, for our overall student population and we want to make sure that they have the, the services they need, but also in a way that allows us to deliver um, to transport our students safely and efficiently. Yes, we are continually exploring alternative transportation uh, as long as it is safe, uh, the most safe option for our students and we continue to work with our vendors uh, and by looking at different counties that surround us to see which direction they're going and looking for best practices. Thank you. And I know there was also significant lobbying by some counties in Annapolis last session for approval of different options. So I would hope we would support those efforts um, and have a voice in that as well to give us some more options. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any 
more questions? If not, Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with our next contract. Sure, the next contract is uh, number seven, CWA-100-24 towing services. This is a new contract, it's, uh, it's for five years. Um, contract will provide for towing services for the Office of Transportation. Um, we have the fleet information included in the in the backup information and the maximum uh, contract spending authority is five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Are there any questions? Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with contract number eight. Sure, uh, new, another new contract. This um, is sound, it may sound similar to the uh, contract um, um, seven or actually six that we just went through. GDA-301-24, transportation of select students and employees. It's a five-year contract that would take us through uh, November 30th, 2028. Uh, this contract will provide for the transportation of select students for the Office of Transportation and the transportation of select employees for the Office of Human Resources uh, operations on an as needed uh, basis. The total of the contract um, is uh, it's five year contract for $10 million. Are there any questions? Mr. Harlove, if you could proceed with contract nine. Sure. Uh, contract nine is JLE-612-20, vehicle lifts, garage, and fleet maintenance. This is an increase in the uh, maximum spending authority. Um, the uh, This uh, request is to increase the maximum spending authority from $400,000 to uh, with an increase of two hundred thousand dollars to bring the maximum contract spending authority to uh, six hundred thousand uh, dollars uh, contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of garage hand and power tools and equipment for the offices of transportation and career and technology education tools are procured for mechanical technician staff who elected not to furnish their own hand and power tool equipment to perform mechanical maintenance tasks. Tools and toolboxes are also purchased for students in the CTE program at Sollers Point Technical and Western School of Technology High Schools. Are there any questions? This is Mrs. Harvey. I just want to have a clarification, if, if I may. Sure. Go ahead, Mrs. Harvey. <laughs> I just want to be clear. Prior to this contract, uh, mechanics that are working an hour in BCPS were using their own tools. Is that what we're saying? We're purchasing tools for them to use within our system. Okay. That is correct. Yes. So historically, oh, go ahead, Jess. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Brad. Historically, it was uh, a bit of a mix. So we had mechanics that had started with us that did bring their own tools at one point um, due to the ever rising cost of those tools. Uh, it behooves us to provide those for our mechanics as a bit of an incentive to join and stay with Baltimore County Public Schools as well. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Or if not, Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with contract 10. Sure. NTA-503-24, security services for extracurricular and other activities requiring security. Um, this is a, a new contract. It's a five-year contract that will take us through um, November 30th, 2028. This contract will provide security for sporting events, other extracurricular activities and events requiring security for uh, the Department of School Safety. Additional events requiring security include, but are not limited to uh, board meeting coverage, special events such as BCPS Fest and all day uh, school-based security assignments. The maximum contract spending authority is $2,340,000. Are there any questions? Mr. Mr. McMillan? Yeah, I'm trying to understand this. 
back in the day, the local school was responsible for paying for the security at athletic events. And I was fortunate enough over my career that the principals took care of that out of their budgets and didn't put it back on the budget that I, I control athletically. But some schools, the athletic directors had to pay for the security out of their, you know, gate receipts or however they worked it out. Am, am I interpreting this that this contract is stating that for all athletic events and 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 it says non-curriculars or, or you know extracurricular like dances or all the security costs coming out of something like this so if i was an athletic director at you know x high school and i needed security for all my football home football games i could submit that and and this contract would pay for that security and I wouldn't have to worry about that, and the principal wouldn't have to worry about that. Is that accurate? I see Ms. Uh, Webster's jumped on. If you want to take a, take a swing at that. Sure. Mr. McMillian, this contract is the vehicle to get the companies that provide the service. The cost of the services is still borne by the individual school. Whether it so be you, the, princ the principal or the athletic director, I'm not certain um, in each school's situation, but this is the contract and the companies that they use for those services. Okay, so if what is there a monetary value to this contract then? If if BCPS, you know, if they're not paying for these fees and the local schools are. Why did it, it almost has the parents that that's coming out of, you know, a larger fund that that somebody on central staff is running. I, I don't I don't understand that. The only no. thing we're we're doing here, uh, Mr. McMahon, and I get what you, where you're coming from, but we we're we're standardizing the procurement. So everyone's using the same vehicle to we're not all each school's not going out and, and kind of coming up with their own contract. So this is the this is the contract that everyone uses. Um, the payment in effect when we're giving schools their budgets, we're giving them the dollars to 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 pay for security as 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 well. So it, it in effect is coming out of the operating budget, but it's not the the uh, the dollars are not centralized because we want to have uh, we want to have some um, incentive, some accountability for uh, you know if we just had a central budget, then folks would not be trying to manage their budget. But by having a budget, then they try to manage the amount that they use to make sure that it's really really uh, required usage. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So that fee is split up among, you know, a bunch of different schools. Recently, I, I was involved in a conversation where they talked about, back in the day, we used Baltimore County police officers. And then we got away from that. We used security. And, and now I was engaged in a conversation that said, we're trying to work out something again with Baltimore County police officers because of security. You know, a lot of times, you know, those people don't show up. And when you have a need, and, and so I guess the feeling is it's just it's a more responsible connection with Baltimore County Police Department. Is anybody aware of any of those discussions, you know, currently going on? Where will they be utilized? I don't. I don't know, uh, uh, Ms. Webster. I don't see anyone from security on the I, lines of Ms. Ms. Webster. If you want to take a, I do not see Ms. Lewis on the line. Um, I know that we work closely with the police department for certain things, but I believe there was some issue with the overtime payments that would need to be made regarding this type of work. And I'm not sure where that all landed because that is a very old conversation. So I would rather defer to Ms. Lewis when she's available. Right. And, and I remember those conversations, a police officer got hurt. And then the issue was, you know, who covers that workman's comp? Do we cover it or does the police department cover it because he's, you know, he's working for us? So I'm, so I know that's an old conversation, but I found it really interesting when I was told that we're back in, you know, negotiating with the police department. Thank you very much for, for you know, taking my questions. Thank you.
-hmm. Are there any additional questions? Yes, Mr. Young, I have a follow up to Mr. McMillian's question. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, so I appreciate Mr. McMillian um, bringing up the question of whether or not schools can use SROs um, after hours, because I've had that conversation with many of our schools um, that would prefer to um, allow the SROs to function in that capacity. They've built relationships with the students, um, particularly at, particularly at sporting events, but any after school activities, um, right? They know the students the best, they know who to look out for, any potential conflicts that might occur. So I would be interested in receiving an update from Dr. Lewis as to where we are on that. But my question is, under this contract, are schools free to go that route if approved? I, is Or is this prohibitive? In other words, can they spend their budgets on the overtime for an SRO to serve in this capacity? Ms. Hen, I am, I am not certain. I would need uh, Dr. Lewis to answer that question. Thank you, Ms. Webster. If there are no further questions related to um, this contract, we, we know there are some outstanding items we would like to discuss with Dr. Lewis, but if there are no more questions, um, we will move on to our final contract and I call on Mr. Dixit. So good evening. Uh, next contract is NTA-500-24 for inspection, maintenance, repair, and installation of uh, bleachers and stadium seating. The contract is for a period of five years. The expenses are in the range of 170 to $200,000 uh, per year with a total of $1 million. The funds to be used are all operating funds. Are there any questions on this contract? I have one, Mr. Young. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Dixit. Good evening, ma'am. Um, as the scope of this contract includes the inspection, does this then outsource that duty um, from internal operations to the selected vendor? Or That's will correct. BCPS staff still be performing inspections? The inspections are done by, by the contractor. It is coordinated by internal staff. And also by internal staff. I'm sorry, you cut it. The audio cut out a second. You said they're done by both? The inspections are done by the contractor. They are coordinated with the internal staff. OK, of the work, but routine yeah. checks um, of the facility of the property will still be done by internal staff. Is That's that correct? correct. That's correct. OK, thank you, sir. That's all I have, mm -hmm. Mr. Young. Thank you. Are there any more questions? There being no further questions, we will proceed to closing the meeting. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 11 be moved to the full board for approval. Mr. Young, may we separate number 10? OK, we can separate number 10. And vote on 1 through 9 and 11. I'll make the motion to approve items uh, 1 through 11. You mean one through nine and 11? I'm sorry, one through nine and 11. Thank you for correcting me. OK. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, we have a second by Mr. McMillan. Um, so the question is on recommending approval of contracts one through nine and 11 to the full board. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Fea, can you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Young. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Thank you.
contracts one through nine and 11 will be moved to the full board with the recommendation of the committee. Ms. Hen, yes. contract 10, did you not want to move that one forward? I would like to um, move that forward without recommendation from the committee so that Dr. Lewis can answer the committee members' questions regarding um, our SROs. Excuse me, Mr. Young, this is Mark. Mr. Young, this is Margaret Ann Howie. If you're moving uh, the contract forward without recommendation, there's no vote necessary because the committee is not making a recommendation. Thank you, Ms. Howie. You're welcome. With not moving it forward without a recommendation from the committee, you would like to wait for answers from Dr. Lewis, which may not come um, by tomorrow's board meeting. Do you still wish to not move this one forward? Yes, sir. I'd like to give Dr. Lewis an opportunity to answer these questions before the um, full board votes on this tomorrow. OK. All right, so we will move one through nine and 11. That has proper, been properly moved and voted on. Um, the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, December 4th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.